Remember kids, do not try this at home. Go to a friend's house. Downclocking RAM is as simple as hopping into your BIOS, disabling XMP profile if enabled, and manually setting RAM frequency under the advanced settings tab. The lowest we can go is 800 MHz, simple as that. Save settings and allow the PC to reboot. We can verify via CPU-Z or another program that our RAM is in fact maxing out at 800 MHz. This is double data rate we're dealing with, hence 400 you're seeing here. The benchmarks you're about to see will contain a proper run of each scenario. Stock, 2800 MHz for these dims out of the box, displayed in white, and underclocked to 800 MHz, displayed in orange. The CPU I'll be using is an i7-6700K overclocked to 4.4 GHz, and the graphics card I'll be using is an EVGA GTX 1070 ACX 3.0 running at stock. Let's start off first with a few CPU synthetics along with an encoding benchmark via Adobe Premiere Pro. First with Cinebench, we see a roughly 10% performance decrease, but this is just the start. Don't worry folks, it gets much worse than this. Geekbench 4 takes things a step further. This indeed is a more comprehensive benchmark and we're beginning to see the effects of slow memory take hold. But in the real world, how much can we expect memory frequency to play a role? Well, with these disparities, quite a large one. Our Adobe Premiere Pro test seemed okay at first, scrubbing detail, rendering, clipping, even forcing GPU accelerated effects. Everything worked out well and without a hitch. But things became very real when I began encoding. Exporting a 10 minute 1080p 60fps file in the YouTube H.264 preset with 800 MHz memory resulted in abysmal render times, nearly double what we should expect from a healthy i7 PC. I find it interesting, however, that apart from serious workloads and CPU stress tests, everyday use of the PC was rather fluid. Games loaded normally, I could surf the web and open multiple tabs without issues. It was all a bit peculiar when seen in the context of what we seriously and purposefully up. But then, the gaming benchmarks began. And wow, was GTA 5 a disappointment? I ran these tests in 1080p in order to leverage the CPU just a bit more. It's also a very popular gaming resolution. Without crippling the system, which was sporting an i7-6700K at 4.4 GHz, remember, in a single GTX 1070, we pulled 137 FPS on average, 74 on the minimum side. But the 800 MHz DDR4 run cut these frame rates in half, actually more than half, 57 on average and a mere 28 FPS minimum. Something else I'd like to show Show here, frame times for GTA 5. We're looking for relatively flat, consistent frame draw times, in this case anywhere from 5 to 15 milliseconds, but we see variability in spiking all over the place with the 800 MHz run. Our 28 MHz line is also much longer because a significantly higher number of frames were rendered during the exact same time period, also something you want to look for in a graph like this. Now onto Battlefield 1, a very well optimized game, even handled a 1.2 GHz CPU with ease. But now, with an average frame rate of 51 and a minimum of 36, we've found an Achilles heel. I will say however that in-game performance consisted of very minimal stuttering and a tight FPS range, always a sign of great optimization. It was that way without the RAM bottleneck by the way. Witcher 3 is our graphics intensive game of choice and it shows here. While the underclocked RAM did impact performance, it didn't do so to the degree I expected. Our overall average drop by 14 and our minimum by 16 fps. Still not bad for a GPU bound title. But let's end on a sour note. How fitting. City Skylines, an intensely CPU dependent game, suffered massively under the memory bottleneck. We went from 73 to 26 FPS on average and down to a terrifying 12 frames per second during its worst segments, notably when zoomed in. I mean, look at this performance, I wouldn't even call it that really. Our graphics card is on cruise control while our CPU is being forced to slow down on behalf of very slow memory transfer rates. Bear in mind, I did not touch cast latency and timings, had I raised those, we'd be in an even larger heap of trouble. Imagine a large and powerful V8 engine capable of, say, 500 brake horsepower, but with a very terrible fuel pump installed. Not enough gas makes it to each cylinder, compression ratios dip, and the lean mixture doesn't live up to the 500 horsepower the engine's rated for. In a similar fashion, our CPUs clock very high, 4.4 GHz, which I believe most anyone can attain with a semi-decent cooler on a 6700K by the way, so our CPU has a lot of potential, but memory frequency reduces the data transfer rate. The CPU is capable of a certain processing potential, but information isn't being fed to the CPU quick enough. This is why typically only unlocked chipsets include support for memory frequencies higher than stock, that's 2133 MHz in the case of DDR4. Any faster and lock skews likely wouldn't keep up with short term information being fed from memory down CPU pipelines. And see, you thought this video would be completely pointless. There's always a chance to either learn or review something. 
Nevertheless, I do hope you enjoyed this video or at least had an ounce or two of your curiosity satisfied. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down. If you feel the complete opposite or if you hate everything about life, be sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Stay tuned for... I don't know, I didn't really think I'd get this far on the first uh, first take. I suppose stay tuned for a proper ITX PC build this time around. I ordered an i5-7600K Kaby Lake processor. I'll be throwing that into the Fractal Node 202 once again, but this time with a Z270 motherboard from ASRock, also an ITX motherboard, and either an RX 480 or a GTX 1070. Not sure which one I'm gonna go with. I might leave that question up to you to be answered. Follow me on Twitter to participate in that poll, which I expect will be open for several days. This is Salazar Studio, thanks for learning with us.